In this video, we're going to take a look at when to use the chain rule and how to use the chain rule and to find the derivative of functions. So let's take a look at these four functions at the beginning here. Now, what do you notice is the difference between these four? Now, some of you might think that the first two have two x's, whereas the latter two only have one. Well, that's part of it. If we take a look at how the functions are formed, you might get a better idea. So if we take a look at the first two, we can see that x squared is multiplied by sine x. So we actually have two functions here. In the second one, we have x squared divided by sine x. So again, we have two functions here. Now in the latter two, we can see that we have an x, um, but it's sine x squared. Now if we were to think of it in terms of numbers, we would take the x, put that number into x, we would square it, and then we would sine. So we would do this part first, and then we do another part. In the second, or the last function, now this might actually be better written as sine x, and then all of that is squared. That's actually another way to write it. But in math notation, we don't usually put the squared on the outside. We do put the squared in between the sine, the trig function, and the x. Now, if we take a look at it in terms of the second one, we can see that we would take the x, or the number, we would sine it, and then square it. Now, if you recall, when we do this, this is actually a composite functions. So the first two are two functions, uh, two functions with a, an operation in between them, whereas the latter two, there is an operation, but is actually a composite because we're taking one number, putting it into one part, doing one operation, and then doing a second operation with the results. So the chain rule is used to compute the derivative of the composite of two functions. And the composite is f of g of x, which means that g is inside f. So written in our function notation, f of g of x is equal to f bracket g of x, and then close our bracket. So notice that this is not multiplication. So we're taking the number, we're doing the inside part first, and then putting it it and applying it to the outer function. So here are some examples to help us identify which part is the inside and which is the outside. So we take a look at this first one here and we have this power of 88 um, to this function. So the g of x is the x cubed minus 5x plus 1. So this would be inside f of x, f of x being x to the power of 88. So we have this function inside to the power of 88. In this function, the stuff inside is our x cubed minus 5x plus 1. In the second example, it might be easier for us to think of this as 3x plus 4 is our g of x, and it's inside, again, f of x, which is the square root of x. So we have the square root, or actually, it might be easier to think of it as x to the half, okay? But we have the square root, and inside the square root, we have 3x plus 4. Now the last one, it doesn't look like there isn't inside and outside function. But we can think of g of x as being the x squared plus 7x minus 6, and it's inside the 1 over x. But you might be thinking, well, where's the inside? So the inside, if we write this as x to the negative 1, it might be a little bit easier to see the second operation. So we're taking that function and its power of negative 1. So this is going to be 1 over or something to the power of negative one. And that stuff that goes inside here is the x squared plus seven x minus six. And that's the stuff inside. 
Now, one way to tell which function is inside and which is outside is to think about how you would plug numbers in. Now, what does it mean to plug numbers in? Um, for example, let's take a look at f of x equals sine x squared. What would you do to compute one point, f of 1.3 on your calculator? Now, the calculators nowadays, we can just type in sine bracket 1.3 squared but if we actually had to do the order of operations and have the kind of calculator where it can't plug in like that you would take the 1.3 we would actually have to square it first because uh, we have to do exponents first okay we get 1.69 and then we take the sine of that so now we're going to take the sine of 1.69 which would give us 0.9929 so the function that we did first the squaring part is the inner function. So that would be this part here. And the function you did second, the sine part, is the outer function. So the chain rule says that the derivative of f of g of x is equal to, now I like to write it in the this notation here is equal to is equal to f bracket g of x close bracket so we would actually take the derivative of the outer function so the f prime and then the g of x inside stays the same and then we multiply it by the inside the derivative of the inside so g prime of x so in words, you differentiate the outer function while holding the inner function fixed. Then you differentiate the inner function and then you multiply them together. So it's kind of like you peel out the outer function like in an onion, okay? And then you're going to have the leftover inside, okay? And then we're going to do something to the inside and then put them together afterwards. So in Leibniz's notation, if y equals f of u and u equals g of x, then we're going to take, the, and we want to take the derivative of y with respect to x. So that's what that part means here. We're going to take the derivative of y with respect to u, and then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of u, which is the inside, remember that u is actually here, with respect to x, where dy du is evaluated at u equal to g of x. All right, let's take a look at an example so we can understand this a little bit better. So we're going to go back to our question with the power of 88. So we first differentiate the outer function. Now I'm going to be very informal here. I'm going to call that inside stuff, stuff. So if we have stuff to the power of 88, using our power rule, we would say 88 times stuff to the power of 87. Remember, we take away one from our exponent. Now, what exactly is this stuff? So according to our question, it is x cubed minus 5x plus 1. So the first term in the chain rule is 88 times x cubed minus 5x plus 1 to the power of 87. So notice that we differentiated the outer function, the power of 88, but we didn't do anything with the inside. It was untouched. We didn't change it. Now we're going to differentiate the inner function. So the derivative of the inside, the stuff, is 3x squared minus 5. So therefore, the derivative of x cubed minus 5x plus 1 to the power of 88 is equal to 88 times x cubed minus 5x plus 1 to the power of 87. Notice the inside is left unchanged. And then we're going to multiply it by the inside, or the derivative of the inside, I should say. So it's going to be 3x squared minus 5. Now I don't really need to order this. I'm not going to obviously expand the power of 87, so I can leave it like this. All right, let's take a look at two other examples. So 
Um, this first one, you might find it easier to change the square root into an exponent. So the square root is a half. So now let's find the derivative. So we're going to take our exponent half. We're going to move it to the front. It's going to be half times 3x plus 4. And then we're going to take half and minus 1, so that gives us negative a half. All right, now that's only the outer function. So let's say that I, we can ignore that now. So I'm going to cross it off. So now I'm going to differentiate the inner function, which is 3x plus 4. And that is going to simply be multiplied by 3. Now we don't really get rid of this. So I'm going to get rid of this um, crossed off part and put my half back in. Okay, so to simplify, the derivative of f of x is... 3 times half, which is 3 over 2. But I do want to also get rid of our, to make my exponent, which is negative right now, to make it positive. So I'm going to move that to the denominator. And then the half actually then becomes back to root 3x plus 4. Okay, let's take a look at one more. So here, um, this is already set up nicely. We have a power 5 on the outside. Okay, so that's my outer function. And then we have the inside. So we're going to take the 5, multiply it by the front, leave the inside unchanged. Do not change anything inside. And then 5 minus 1 becomes 4. Now we're going to multiply by the inside, which is going to be 21x squared and then plus 6. Now, I'm not going to multiply anything again. We're just going to leave it like this, and then that is it. Okay, and that's the chain rule.